bleed. Shalom Wong. Shalom First and foremost, we're going to face Jerusalem. Giving all praise on and glory to the Right? Double honors to the apostle Joseph Great Millstone. Peace and attention to the hope of the elect. Right? <clears throat> Shalom Wong to the believers that subscribe. The Spirit and power of your heart by Yahweh Shai. All right? Yahweh is the true name of our Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son. Now, Lord, and Savior, we pray in the Lord Jesus Christ. By Shem Kakodash in the name of the Holy Spirit, the inspiration given to us to edify those that have ears to hear. Right? Uh, we got a live lesson today. Pretty much, it's really an open form, but of course, we're going to deal with the uh, the main subject matter, which is Yahweh Shah. And according to the scriptures, right, as Yahweh Shah said, he comes in the volume of the book, right? Uh, get Psalms 40 and Hebrews 10. And then we just gonna go and speak. This is Psalms chapter 40, verse 7. Then said, I lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Go ahead. I delight to do thy will, O my power. And that's what we like to do. The will of the Heavenly Father, man. Okay. That's why we are Tabernacle of David, all right? That's who is going to be on the forefront of the event, all right? And telling you the 100% truth as it is written. You know, not sugarcoating, okay? Not holding back, not adding and taking away. You got more? Yeah, a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah, the law is within my heart. The law is within our heart, right? Now, this entire book is the law. Revelation with the Apocrypha included, okay, is the volume of the book. Y'all can not hold but we form one. Go ahead. Shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And that's how the law becomes a part of your natural uh, 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 being, right? They say it's, the law is in our heart. The only way the law is going to be in your heart is if you're constantly meditating upon the words Right, the law, statutes, and commandments of your heart, by Shem Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Yeah, all that is written therein. Not some, all, to the best of our ability. All right. And as teachers, okay, after we learn, we are to become teachers. And as teachers, we are to teach our, our people, man. Being so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Hispanics, right? and the seed of those tribes, 12 tribes that's been scattered abroad, okay? You might identify with Chinese, you might identify with uh, Hawaiian, okay? Japanese, Korean, all right? But it's the spirit ultimately that bears witness. If you can see the righteousness of Yahweh Bashi Yahushai that's contained within the volume of this book, then you are Israelite because only Israelites are gonna receive the wisdom, the, the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of this book. All right, that's, you can finish the. That, that's we got a uh, spoon that verse. Yeah, okay. And then you get the root form one. For then 
thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shall have good success. Right. So the only true prosperity is when you do the things that please your heart by shall your shot. When we commit to the will, the righteous will of your by shall your shot, then we'll be prosperous. All right? And the true prosperity is going to come when the kingdom of heaven is established on earth. And that's not going to happen until your house shot when the kingdom of power of Jesus Christ comes and destroys this wicked society that's set up before us today. All right? There's no such thing as true prosperity in America. All right? There's no such thing as true prosperity in America because America is the embodiment of the future, which is Babylon. All right? What you think is right is actually wrong in most cases when you live and dwell in America. All right? Go ahead, Yakima. All right, this is this is Baruch. This is Baruch 4, verse 1. It says, this is the book of the commandments of the Most High. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High. Now, Baruch was described by Jeremiah, okay? And here he is, he's saying the same thing that Joshua said, the same thing King David said, okay? And we're going to get Hebrews 10 and 7 here in a minute, which Apostle Paul wrote. Go ahead. My bad. Timothy. Go ahead. It says, and the law that endured forever. Yep, and the law that endured forever. All right? So, contrary to popular belief and the things you've been taught within the Christian community, all right, about the law being done away with it, you know, we don't have to follow, as Vocab Malone calls, God's laws. We're under Jesus' laws. Well, there's no difference. Right. All right? Yahweh. And the uh, only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our King, Lord, and Savior, they are one with the understanding, all right? And the perfection of that understanding, uh, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are one. We are trying to become perfect in that understanding, all right? Through constantly meditate and observing these laws. See, they, they have the perfect bodies to keep them in, all right? We have the perfect mind and spirit, Lord willing, we are the elect, but we're going to have to constantly fight and battle in these vessels to become the Lord's elect. That's, that's what's set up for us to do on earth, all right? We were called and set up on earth to fight, all right? To fight against the evil doings and the vibration of wickedness that's constantly going out. Go ahead, y'all can It says, all that keep it shall come to life. But such as leave it shall die. Right, such as leave it shall die. So when you leave the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of this book, essentially what you're doing is leaving the spirit of Yahweh Shai. And the spirit of Yahweh Shai is life. Right? Give me, uh, go ahead. This is, uh, John, yep. chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And search the scriptures, for in them ye have eternal life. All right, give me uh, the book of John. All right, uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to me but by the Father. Go ahead with that Hebrews 10, unless you had something. Bro. I have a precept. Go ahead, bro. Uh, uh, we brought this out yesterday. Uh, this is 2nd Ezra 7 and, and verse 20. It says, For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law. Of the most high. They despise the law of the most high. Right? When you go into the Hebrew word uh, uh, for law, right? Uh, it's uh, law. Okay? The word law means join unto me. Right? So we are joined unto the Heavenly Father by Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai has the perfect understanding of the word of the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? I believe it's John 14 and 6. Go ahead. It says, um, that is set before them. For the Most High hath given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came. And it's in the context of the book. All right? These are straight, this book is a book of straight commandments. All right? As a matter of fact, when you deal with the, the commandments in this book, it's straight up. It ain't no parabolic talk when it comes to the laws and the commandments. All right? Now there's dark sayings of spiritual things that have to be uh, thoroughly uh, uh, examined, okay? And the spirit of Yahweh Shai has to be on you to understand that yeah, there are parables 
there are allegories, there are dark sayings, but so far as the laws in this book, what we ought to do and not to do, right. that's why you don't have to be deep, all right? You want to say, uh, in the uh, Sirach, right, it says, better is he that has small understanding than he that has much knowledge and transgresses the law, all right? Go ahead, bro. Right. I'm about to say this, because if you could just follow the law to the best of your ability and do what the Lord tell you to do, coming out and teaching, Hey, that's that's enough right there to, to, to stay on the right side of, of the Lord's uh, uh, judgment. Yeah, you know, to keep him from bringing a hammer down on your ass. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. Essentially, you want to continue to grow and understanding in this truth as much as possible. But it's not required for you to be some deep philosopher right. of the scriptures, right? Now, if you don't continue to grow, right? going to become stagnant and the flow of the spirit is going to be quenched and that's forbidden the scriptures say quench not the spirit all right so you want to continue to grow but you want to grow within the spirit that the lord gave you all right because everybody has a portion and uh everything is not revealed to everybody at the same time and some things that certain men uh won't have revealed to them right until the, you know what i'm saying until your house shot comes and changes us all right because there's different portions of the spirit go ahead brother it says and what they should observe to avoid punishment but it's simple right it says uh it talks about the scripture talk about the simplicity in your house shot all right you read in uh I believe that's in wisdom of Solomon as his ways are plain unto the holy, right? The uh, stumbling blocks unto the wicked. So his, his ways are really plain to his chosen, to his elect, all right? Go ahead, go ahead with this. You got that, uh, John? This is John chapter 14, verse 6. Yahweh Shai said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. Now read the beginning of that uh, scripture that you just read. What you said in Second Andrews? What you said? Uh, second Andrews. Um, second Andrews seven and when we started twenty or twenty. At the top of the, where you started it. The second Andrews seven and twenty. It says, "For there be many that perish in this life because they have despised the law." of the Most High that is set before them. Mm -hmm. For the Most High have given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment. And essentially what you should observe is the way that Yahweh Shai came 2,000 years ago, right? This book was already written and prophesied of him to come. And then when he came, he was the example that we ought to follow, man. All right? He was the, everything that he was doing, he was doing because he was commanded of his heavenly father to do. All right? He, was, he wasn't coming to do his own will. All right? So the, the scripture said there's no uh, greater love than a man lay down his life for his brethren. All right? So essentially what you ought to do, just to, just to simplify it, is you're really supposed to lay down your life all right to show your brothers the right way to live okay but first you have to learn that Yahweh Shah was the chief example so it all starts with him okay he said my sheep hear my voice and they follow me okay the voice of Yahweh Shah Yahweh Shah all right is the words that's in this holy bible but men speak these words and when they speak it in sincerity and truth all right that's the voice that you're supposed to latch on to and follow, okay? Go ahead at the uh, Hebrews 10 and say, what you got? Uh, I didn't okay, you ain't finished it, go ahead. Read it again, stop. No, read it again, read it again. Bring it out again. This is, uh, this is, uh, okay. This is John chapter 14, verse 6. Yahweh Shai said unto, unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah. Yeah. And see, when Yahweh was on the scene, he had the uh, Pharisees, right, which they were supposed to be uh, 
masters of the law. Just like Yahweh Shai said to Nicodemus, he was, uh, aren't you a master and you don't, you don't know what I, what I say when I say you gotta be born again, right? Because the law has a, it's a spirit tied to the law. You can just read what the law says, but the understanding of what the law really means for you to, and how you're supposed to live by that law, the spirit of it, Yahweh Shai had, the man, he mastered the spirit of the law. Like I was giving an example to one of the brothers. Let's say, all right, uh, you have a child, right? Say that woman gives birth to their child on the Sabbath. Her water breaks on the Sabbath. What you supposed to do? Tell her to wait until the Sabbath's over to have a, to have a child, right? Let's say, let's say after, the, let's say another example. Let's say the child was born and on the eighth day, all right, this, the, on the eighth day of the child's birth, eight days after the child, eight day after the child is born, is the Sabbath. Are you not supposed to circumcise that child on the eighth day? No. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Lord came. He said it's, it's, it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. All right. I'm gonna show you something about that. Right. So it, it was always, uh, you know, they got that saying, laws are made to be broken. Well, not the laws of the heavenly Father, but within. But in the laws of the Heavenly Father, there's still a spiritual order of how things are supposed to go. You know, Yahweh Shah came to set the record straight, right? Matter of fact, give me uh, Matthew 5, right? Hey, what you had, bro? You got it. Okay, come. Uh, this is John 1 and 1. In the beginning, what's the word? And the word was with the power. And the word was the power. The same was in the beginning with the power. You got it, bro. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing. I mean, it's like it. Without him was not anything made that was made. Y'all talking about you how shot. Because he is the word. That's right. Like the brother Brother Dang in the Bible with a book. So the only thing that the Heavenly Father created was his only guy's son was your house shot. And everything else was spoken to exist through his son, man. Right? That's why I say everything was made by him without nothing it was made. That's right. Alright? And guess what? The Lord, alright, is it what? The word. Yeah. Hey, matter of fact, get Colossians to back yeah, it up real quick. Now, right? There's a spirit because I was asking meditating on it before I came uh, down here to uh, you know, speak. Yeah, 15. But you gotta be, see what it is, and you gotta open your mind up. You know what I'm saying? You gotta open your mind up to believe this is what faith. Well, yeah, the Lord gotta open your yeah, mind up. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I know what you're saying, but. Yeah, I know, you know yeah. you gotta take that and yeah. be closed mind. Yeah. You know, even though it's the heavenly father, you know, shot, which is our mediator. But in the day, not Jake, they put a corner on the corner level. You gotta open your mind to receive it. Yeah. The Jake don't really like to open their mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in order to receive this knowledge, we can understand it. That's just something you have to do. That's, that's the process. Yeah. And you only gonna do that, you know, not saying what the brother said I'm wrong, but ultimately, the only way you're going to open up your mind, the Lord has to open your mind. Right. Scripture you say, man's going to the Lord. Right. So just as much as he come in the value of the book and all things were made by him, right? You, you really have to understand that you, all things and everything you see before you was made by his only begotten son, okay? The one you usually call Jesus Christ, he created all things and the heavenly father gave him the blueprint to cre create all things for his pleasure and the pleasure of his son, okay? So if you have a spirit that is incapable in of receiving this understanding, right. ultimately it's because the Heavenly Father, hey, didn't give you to his, his, his only begotten Son for his pleasure. Right. All right? Go, go ahead, bro. This Colossians 1 and 15, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature. Right, see the firstborn of every creature, man, which is our Lord the same. Go ahead. Well, hey, where you had started at 15? Start over one. It's Colossians 1 and 14, in whom we have redemption. Go, go back up, because you're still in the middle of it. Go ahead. Go, go up or nothing. 
It's Colossians 1 and 12. Yeah. Giving thanks unto the Father, yeah. which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Right, and let's go into who the elect. All right, the elect that took what? Read it again. To be partakers. To be what partakers? I mean, what to join heirs, man. All right, go ahead. Of the inheritance of the saints in light. Go ahead. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. Who delivered us from the power of darkness? You have a shot. And how do you get delivered through the darkness? The word. All right, because what you say, he brought us out of darkness, to his father's light, because this word is an eye opening. You see, remember, our eyes were shut at one time. We couldn't see. But guess what? The Lord tapped our Peter gland, all right, and what? Woke us up to the understanding. No? You got it. And they have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Woo! Go ahead. That's it, beautiful. You ain't got to say no now. Go ahead. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Through who? His blood. Through his blood, we have redemption, man. All right, that's why when the mother had got, all right, John uh, uh, 14 to 6, because you have a shot that uh, the way, man. You see, why? Because he sacrificed. And guess what we're doing right now? We're making our body live a sacrifice. The scripture speaks about um, you see likewise in the same manner. All right, go ahead. Even the forgiveness of sins. Even for the forgiveness of who sins, man? Who the only people can see on the face of the earth? The Israelites. All right, we're going to Psalm, what's Psalm uh, 147? He showed his word to Jacob. He statues and judged to Israel. He had not dealt so well with any nation. And our Lord and Savior is going to what? The tribe of Judah. All right, this is an in-house thing, man. It never was a, uh, 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 you know, everybody or anybody know this is the in-house thing. About Israel. That's why the Lord said he set the bounds according to the number of the children of Israel. Uh -huh. When you set up when you set a bound, it means you set up a perimeter or you set up uh, 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 lines that can't be crossed. Right. Right. Like the word the, the word uh sin is synonymous with trespassing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We the only ones that can trespass uh the law, steps and, and, and commandments of the Heavenly Father, honestly, because we the only ones that ever received those laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, nevertheless, according to what the law is, it determines what sin is. Other men can do it, but they're not held to the penalty of it. Right. That's why it says in Amos the third chapter, if brother, grab, I'll get it. Matter of fact, I want to get that real quick. You got it out. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not speaking out of our own. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 self will, right? right? We're not speaking out of our own mind. Even when we saying things, we're, we're really quoting the scriptures. We're really speaking in the volume of the book. Right, that's why I say lean not to your own understanding. Yep. Because you get the true understanding. What? In the word. You know, stop listening and start reading. Basically, and the Lord will suck with you, man. Amos 3, 1 and 2. Hear this word that the Lord had spoken against you, O children of Israel against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. So Esau, they uh, come out the land of Egypt. Right. Moab didn't come out. The Chinese didn't come out. Right. You know, the Japanese didn't come out. The Arab, they didn't come out. It was what Israelites. Yeah, it's only one nation that he delivered out of the land of Egypt. And Egypt had more than just Israelites in captivity. Yeah. You know, Egypt was a, was a, uh, What's the word like uh, 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 a supreme kingdom for lack of better words you know just like in the babylonian captivity in the persian captivity in the greek captivity the israelites weren't the only nations in that captivity uh, under the rule of those uh kingdoms but the lord only brought israel out okay it says which i brought up from the land of egypt you only have i known of all the families of the earth Therefore, I will punish you for all the all your iniquity. So the Lord's going to punish those that He has subjected to His law. That's why a Chinese, a heathen nation, a Moabite—I'm going to call it like uh, you know the scriptures call them a Moabite, which is so-called so Chinese, okay? Uh, a Edomite, so-called white man. Uh, you got uh, uh, Edomites, okay? All these other nations outside of Israel, 
they can sin and really not be held to any penalty. The only, the only, the only penalty that these other nations be uh, really punished for is for dealing with us uh, uh, unrighteously. Right. You know. Right. That's why the Lord said they touch the apple of the apple of his eye. Right. You so called uh, you Edomites. All right. Okay. You touch the apple of the Most High's eye. That's what you're being punished for. You're not being punished because you are uh, a homosexual. You're not being punished because uh, <laughs> you're a pedophile. All right. You're not. You re you're really being punished because how you dealt with us. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. Yeah, because what the scripture say? Uh, do no harm to my what? Prophets. I right, was it? Touch not my anointing. You know, our prophets, our prophets. Yep. So we all anointed, but we follow who? Yahweh Shai. Then you got the prophets. You see, so the devil is, is, is well under, uh, under the scope of judgment, man. Yep. You got that word bound. Uh, yeah, uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 9. Uh, from, you got it from Deuteronomy. Oh, no, I just, I looked it up on Antimon online. Okay, okay. And, and get, the, get the scripture real quick, uh, Farah. Deuteronomy 32. Okay. 32 and 9. It's Deuteronomy 32 and 9 for the Lord's portion. The pack is 8. The part is at the point is at 8. This is Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, and when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. See, he set the bounds according to the number of the children of Israel. So the brother will get the word bounds right in the Adam Online dictionary. All right. It says <clears throat> bound, boundary marker from old French bond limit boundary boundary stone variant which is uh well, i'm gonna jump down it says an external limit yeah a limit you know just like now get get joel uh get joel 14 and 5 right is it more on the definition of that a little bit, a little bit more okay. saying limits of an estate or territory limits of an estate or territory yep. right so who is the most highest territory israel yep. all right and he has set he has set limits on how much he's going to allow to be done to them all right and he has set limits on who is a part of israel all right because israel when you go into the name israel what it means sons of god okay so everybody is not a son of God when it comes to this uh, to this word, right? The only sons of God are those that bear witness with the Holy Spirit, okay? And <laughs> technically, if you want to get on a physical corner level, those men are Israelites. Those men and women are Israelites, okay? From the tribes of uh, the sons of Jacob, all right? But because we don't have what you would call uh, gene genealogy, yeah, 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 genealogy yeah, yeah. records, right. right? We can't come and say, see, it's proof. Like you can have certain people that can uh, trace their trace, trace line back physically because it's, it's records, no. you know what I'm saying? And a lot of those old Bibles, families would have those, a lot of Bibles back in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the slave times especially had family uh, lineages written down. That Bible would be passed down, you know, from generation to generation. And this this family's line was kept on record. But because of the curses, our our uh, our record was was, was 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 wiped out. Yeah, our heritage was discontinued. And then you go into the curses. It says that the name of Israel was going to cease from among men. But that was our punishment. Right, our redemption was coming back to the knowledge and understanding of who we were, but not on a physical level, on a divine level, on a supernatural level, which is the spirit. That's how we know who Israel is today. Not based upon color, not based upon any other aspect except for the Holy Spirit bearing witness with 
what's written within the scriptures, and that's the understanding of the how much and how righteous judgment. That's all that you need to be identified as Israel in today's time. All right, and through that alone, we know that you're an Israelite. You got it, bro. This is Job 14 and 5. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pay. This is talking about Esau Edom, all right, the wicked. But the, the nation in the Bible that's in complete opposition to the righteous judgment of Yahweh Shem and Yahweh Shah, and is the uh, number one enemy of uh, the Israelites, okay? When you read in Psalms, the 83rd chapter, okay? I know we're kind of going all over the place, but let's jump there real quick. Go ahead, Thom. Psalms 83. This is Psalms chapter 83. 31. Yeah. Chapter 1. I mean, this is Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. Take your time. Keep not, th keep not thou silence O power. Hold not thy peace, and be not be not still, O power. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Yeah, they proud. Those nations that hate us, they lifted up their head, and they proud. They look, they look down on us. Okay, go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have taken crafty counsel against the Lord's people. Now, who are the Lord's people? We just read Israel. Go ahead. It consulted against thy hidden ones. They consulted against thy hidden ones. Go ahead. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Right, so there's a whole agenda that's funded, all right, by the elites, okay, the banking families, to keep the knowledge of who the nations are, mainly Israel, hidden, okay? I say that again. There's an agenda, all right, by the elites of the society, the bankers, to keep the true nationality of the Lord's people hidden, okay? Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Uh-huh. I just want them to read the, the first house. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent. All these nations have consented together with one consent. Go ahead. They are co confederate. Confederate against thee. Yep. The tabernacles of Edom. That's it. The tabernacles of Edom. And then it's going to, because that, that's the chief enemy of the Israelites. Your number one enemy. If I ask a so-called black man, all right, a so-called African-American man, who his number one enemy is, most of them couldn't even tell you. Or they'll try to sympathize. Really, they know. All right? Now, uh, some of them will tell you straight up, the white man. Okay? But they've become so uh, sensitized to their enemy, all right? <laughs> are desensitized to their enemy, right? That they won't even admit that that's who, the, to, who their enemy is. Hey, hey, like who did? Yesterday. Yeah, like Jay did yesterday. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm no, gonna no, make, you I just wanna make this one, one more point. What nation of people on the earth has done worse things to you? Right. So-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, man than the one nation that's in the top of your head right now, so-called white man. Name one nation of people on the earth that's done worse things to you than the so-called white man. Name one. Okay. You can't. Right. I was just gonna agree with you though, but like, you made the point, bro. Jake, Jake will try to, you know, throw somebody else in there, but you can't. You can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, hey, we, 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 we evil against each other. But that's the curses, man. Yeah. They said that shit yesterday. You know? I, I forget I forget exactly what you said, but but basically he threw he threw Jake in there. Yeah, yeah, because I was saying right? uh, oh, I said I said uh uh I said the so-called white man don't show us no mercy. So the black man don't show you no yeah, mercy that's either. What he did, yeah. Which 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 essentially he made he made a good point, but we're talking about the source of the problem, man. Uh, like I said, name one nation on the planet Earth that's done worse things to you than the so-called white man. You can't. And see, if he was smart, 
But see, that's why I say he lifted up his head. He's proud. He's proud about the history that he's done unto you. Yep. That's why, because if he wasn't, he would he would have he make no movies. He, he wouldn't make no movies. Yeah. What what he would have done was he would have fabricated another nation that did something worse. Exactly. You know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Before, before he got a hold to you in the, in, uh, the transatlantic slave trade. Right. He made movies about it. It's in the book. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He got holidays yeah. about it. It's in your face. Yeah. It's like a slap in the face. But you don't realize that why? Because you're not woken up to the understanding. Because say what wisdom, uh, what that is, uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, what is that, Ecclesiastes 7, what is that, sure enough pressure, make the wise man, man. 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 Yeah. Because yeah. why? Because you start to understand the truth, man. Say the truth will set you free. And guess what? In, 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 a, in a time of receiving it, a lot of things going to make you mad. Why? Because you're going to start to understand, man. Yep. Because the spirit, yeah. the, spirit of, the spirit of your heart, watching how it's shot, right, is what ultimately brings you to the understanding of your purpose. And what what your true history is, yeah. and what really what really is uh, uh, going on in this world, okay? So far as judgment, uh, so far as judgments uh, concerned, so far as judgment is concerned, what's really going on, okay? And it's it's really about the Lord, all right? Remember, uh, all things consist because of Him. I know we need to go back to Colossians. When we, we, when we uh, Lord willing, get done with this portion of the spirit that we're dealing with, which is pretty much Esau, Edom, my number one, is our number one enemy, man. Okay? But the Lord even even created him. Okay? Go ahead. Let's, let's go. Oh. All right, cool. Go ahead, then I go back. Hey, look how red this is. This, this, is uh, this is Habakkuk 2 and 16. It says, Thou art filled with shame for glory. They are what? Thou art filled with shame for glory. Yeah. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. Right, that's, right. that's what it is. Now you got these so-called white people, the Edomites, they said, let bygone be bygone, let's all come together, yeah. right? Because of the shame of history. Because now it's coming out. It's coming out. It's co and we're starting to understand. Now, now we're starting to understand who he is, right? We understand now that he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Yeah. We know who his true nationality is, and we know he was set up to destroy us. Uh, we must believe in the lie, but you got the, the, the majority of people still in their delusion. They still believe in their lie, man. You see that? You got it out. Right? It says, it says, the cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned into thee. The who? The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned into thee. Right, right. That's going to Jeremiah 49. Right, yeah. the, the, the cup of slavery. Right, at the Lord's right hand, yeah, the, sure. this is Yahweh Shah, right? Now Yahweh Shah paid for the sins of who? Israel, right. not the whole world. Now you look at what Yahweh Shah went through, okay? And you look at what the so-called Negro man, Latino and Native American man went through, all right? Nobody's went through worse, beginning with Yahweh Shah and his people, all right? Yeah. You, you, you can't look at another nation on the planet Right, and compare what happened to the so-called, first of all, who you in to call Jesus Christ, because it starts with him, because he's the right hand. But within the Lord's right hand is the Lord's people, okay? So his people has suffered just as they they should, one, because they transgressed the laws and commandments of the Heavenly Father, including his only begotten son, including the one that you call Jesus Christ, he went off. So when he when he died on that cross, matter of fact, just because this is this, this is a strong point I'm making that people that's newly listening wouldn't understand. It. So it's it's vital that we bring the scriptures out. The the the, the only begotten Son, the one you you call Jesus Christ, he didn't just pay for uh, what you call the world sins, which is Israelite sins. He paid for his own sins also. Okay. So you will still say, how did he do that? I thought he, I thought he, I thought he didn't commit sin. Well, he committed sin in his past life. He committed sin when he was Adam, when he was Solomon. But see, that's that's something that's deep. All right. Well, go ahead, bro. This is Hebrews seven and twenty-seven. Who need of not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. Yeah, he said he don't, he don't, he didn't, he don't need to do that daily. 
because under the old covenant, right, the sacrifice for sins, right, was done by what? Animals, okay? But he was the ultimate sacrifice. So when his sacrifice was accomplished, there was no need for that, animal, that daily animal sacrifice, okay? There's no need for blood to be shed for sins anymore because Yahweh Shah's blood was sufficient enough to cover all sins of the entire nation of Israel and Israel only, right. all right? Now, those, uh, that blood didn't just cover uh, Israel's sin, it covered Yahweh Shah, who we called Jesus Christ, his sins before his uh, life on earth 2,000 years ago, man. Go ahead, bro. That's what you gotta be, like I said, we talked about earlier, the Lord had to open your mind up to receive. That. Right, right. See? Right. Because it's spiritual. Well, in this reincarnation, which a lot of people don't believe in reincarnation. You know, Christianity don't push reincarnation. Yo, as a matter of fact, Matter of fact, <laughs> spirit taking me everywhere. But we're gonna finish that though. Go to second uh Samuel 12. Go ahead, go ahead, Karab. Uh, For this he did once when he offered up himself. Right, which is the way when he was so-called Jesus Christ. Which is the true name in the Hebrew. Alright, is Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah means what? He is the deliverer. He is the savior. Alright. Point is, 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 you said a part where it says for, uh, for his also for his sins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, read it again. Slide. This is Hebrews 7 and 27. Who need of not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins. Okay, yeah, first for there you go. There you go. First for his own sins. So the sacrifice first and foremost was for his own sins. As Adam. Okay. Yeah. Now, now we're gonna go back to Colossians because Colossians, I think Colossians breaks it down. You know what I'm saying? As as all things uh, uh, consist uh, were, were made by Him, right? We're gonna we're gonna jump back there, and it's gonna uh, edify the point of when He was Adam. Okay, go ahead, bro. Nah, nah, he stay where he at. Let let the ride, bro. It's Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature? The firstborn of every creature, right? So it said, it said it's talking about who you get in the call Jesus Christ, that he's the firstborn of every creature, right? So in the beginning, you never saw the name Jesus. But it says he was the firstborn of every creature. But when he read John 1 and 1, it say, in the beginning was the word, right? So when you see the word God in Genesis, that's talking about who you can be called Jesus Christ and the angels. It's, it, it's, 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 it's in a plural sense, but it begins with Yahweh Shah. See, the heavenly father created his only begotten son. And after that, the, uh, the rest of creation was made by the hand of his son. You got it, bro. Go ahead and finish it in KJV first. It's Colossians 1 and 15. Who was the image of the invisible power in the firstborn of every creature? Yep. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities. They say, they say by him, who you in the call Jesus Christ were all things made visible and invisible. So that means when it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, that's the one that you really call Jesus Christ. That's not talking about the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father and the Son are different entities, okay? With the same understanding. Alright? Go ahead, bro. Is it more? Visible and invisible. Visible and invisible. So the air that you breathe, who made it? All right? Yahweh Shah, the one you didn't call Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, 
All things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him, man. Okay? Go ahead, it's more. Uh-huh. And he is before all things. He is before all things. And by him all things consist. Right, so the Alpha and Omega is not talking about the Heavenly Father. Right. The Alpha and Omega is talking about the Son. Right. Because the Heavenly Father has no beginning. Okay? Why, That's why he's the Ancient of Days. Go ahead. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Preeminence. Right. Which means he's going to have the authority. Right? Preeminence goes into the authority. So in all things, Yahweh Shah has authority. Okay? Second, uh, this, you, 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 you can drop that right now. Go to Second Ezra six, where it says, uh, uh, "Adam, who he made Lord over all thy creatures." Right? We're gonna go there, and then that's Second Corinthians fifteen. What I just, what I just had you. Let's get what I just gave you. Second Corinthians, First Corinthians fifteen and twenty one. This go is ahead. Sec, this is Second Ezra six and fifty four. It says, "And after these, Adam also." Who thou made us Lord of all thy creatures. Right, see Adam, he said he, say he made Adam Lord over all thy creatures. All right? So preeminence means first authority. So, so how can Adam, so that would be a contradiction, right? Unless who you in the call Jesus Christ was Adam. See what I'm saying? Get that word preeminence real quick because I don't want to make things up, right? Okay. That's why that uh, the nigga that died. Yeah, that's because that, that's how the spirit has to work with you in the in the volume of the book. It's precept upon precept, precept upon precept. It's a puzzle. It's in the code. You have to go here a little, there a little, and put the parts together to be able to see, all right, the the true understanding of the scriptures, what's written in the book. Everybody don't got that ability, man. Right? This is preeminence in the Blue Letter Bible. The definition for it, to be first, hold the first place. To be first in rank or influence. To be first in rank or influence, all right? So in Colossians we read that he had the preeminence. So-called uh, so Jesus Christ, if you so-called so Jesus Christ, the true name is Yahweh Shah, right? He's first in rank, all right? So if the Lord set up uh, Adam and made him Lord over all thy creatures, right? Wouldn't that have had to been your house shot? Right. You see? Go ahead. This is the root definition for jumping to the strong definition. Foremost in time, place, or order, or importance. Foremost. Foremost. Yeah. Foremost. What now? Foremost in time, place, order, and importance. First, foremost in time, place, what else? Order. Order. Or importance. Or, or importance. You know? Now go back. You got more on there? Uh, you do one more. Okay. Before beginning, best in chief. Best in chief. Okay. Now read that again. Uh, second edge is Yaka Nun. This is 2nd Ezra 6 and 54. It says, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. They say of him, they say, they say we all come of Adam. Hold on, I thought we all came of your house shop. Huh? Because he was both. Yahweh, who you didn't call Jesus Christ, he was Adam. And when Eve went off and caused Adam to go off, Adam sinned. But guess what? 
a woman don't have no preeminence. That's why when the Lord uh, came and said, uh, what, what has thou done? Adam said, it was the woman that thou gavest me. But guess what? Adam was Lord over the woman. So whatever that woman done, Adam essentially was responsible for that woman because that, wo that woman was the possession of Adam. A woman is a possession. A woman has no authority over the man, right? Even though the woman was responsible and sin came in through her because she was a weaker vessel and she was the the uh, the, 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 the uh, vessel that Satan knew that he could get the advantage over, all right? Now, Read that again one more time, Yakanan. All the way through. And then I'm gonna let you get yours last. I wanna get to 2 Corinthians 15 out. Okay. Come. This is 2 Ezra 6 and 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. Of him come we all. Okay. Go ahead, Ah. That's a little more. And the people also who thou hast chosen. And the people also who thou hast chosen. All right? So all people were made by who you came to call Jesus Christ. And also the chosen people who the Heavenly Father gave his only begotten Son to be joined unto, to be made one with, to mediate for. Right. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, 21. This is First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection. That's why Yahweh is also known as the Son of Man. Right? Go ahead. Of the of the dead. For as in Adam. So read, slow down. Now read that one more time. This is First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So, who was resurrected from the dead? When you read in the Bible, who was resurrected from the dead? Okay? It said, by that man came death. Yeah. When you read Romans 6 and 23, it say what? The wages of sin is death. You had that? Yeah, I got some. Hold on, brothers. Hold on. Hold on. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Let's finish this right here right quick. Go ahead. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. For as in Adam, all die. For as in Adam, all die. Right? Go ahead. Even so, in a Mashiach, Alive. Even so, in Christ was a Mashiach, was, right, was written there as Christ, right? Which, which, which means anointed. And the Hebrew is a Mashiach, so that's why he said a Mashiach, right? And a Mashiach, we all what? We, sh we shall all be made alive. We shall all be made alive. So life and death is in the power of the Lord. Okay, it's the hand of the power of the Lord, man. At the end of the day, it's already predestined. Okay, it's already predestined the, the type of life that you are going to live on this earth, all right? Now, the under, you being able to receive this understanding, all right, is what gives you the ability to hope for the kingdom of heaven, to hope for in the next life to come. See, that's what a, a major stumbling block within the Holy Bible is reincarnation, man. You, you don't know the Bible if you don't understand reincarnation. You don't truly know the Bible if you don't understand reincarnation. That's a major, uh, that's a major portion of the spirit. You see what I'm saying? Read that one more time, and then uh, you got it in the box. This First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in a Mashiach shall all be made alive. Yep. Yep. Because he, 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 the beginning was Adam, and the end is Yahweh Shah. So when the Lord came and he died on the cross and he said it is finished, 
that means he had righted all the wrongs for good. You see what I'm saying? So from that point forward, everything was capable of being turned back to righteousness. The path to righteousness was set. We were able to, to walk that path and get back to the Heavenly Father through your hollow shot. You want him to get that? I was just asking the Lord this. Yeah, that's it. Come, go ahead, bro. This is Romans chapter 5, verse 19. Yep. For as by one man disobedience may work. So like, for as take your time. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So but Yep, see? So he said, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So sin came into the world by one man's disobedience. All right? Now, like what I was saying earlier, now the scriptures tell you through the woman uh, came the beginning of sin, but the man was responsible for that woman. Go back to chief. You see what I'm saying? Head of the household. That woman was joined up to that man. So when you marry a woman, that woman represents you. Right. So if your woman is, is, is going out uh, uh, in, a, in an adulterous manner, half dressed, half naked, guess what? She represents you. Yeah. And you walk alongside your woman and her ass out and her, her breasts are showing and she's revealing, you are causing sin right. because men are looking upon your woman. Lusting after your woman. And that's not something that they can control. If your woman is half naked and she with you, the man going to look. Ain't going to look in a way that's sexual, in a, in a way, that, a, a lustful way. There's no getting around. That's why a woman's supposed to be covered, man. Especially, especially the only, only time a woman should be revealing is in the bedroom with her man. Other than that, that's sin, man. Yeah, you see the, you see the, you see the, uh, the East Indians, man. They be what? They be clothed. Yeah. From head to toe. Head to toe. You don't see nothing but their eyes. That's how you see. Because that's what supposed to, that's, that's how, uh, that's black woman supposed to be too, man. Yeah. They get that from us. Yeah. That's in the scriptures. See, when a woman comes out revealing, what it's, what it's saying is that she's available. That's right. So if you walking with your wife and she's revealing what she, what the message is, <laughs> And see, that's a spiritual message. No, no, no matter, no matter what the physical says, the spiritual message is saying she's available. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nothing new on the sun, so it's been going on. It's been going on. But that was just a little side note, you know. But anyway, go, go back, start over with that. This is Romans chapter five, verse nineteen. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. I was shot as the brother breaking down. All right, well, he just uh, said, I mean, we just brought out a Hebrew, the seventh chapter. Go ahead. So by the obedience, so by the obedience man, of one shall many be made righteous. Right, and that's the word that he was shot. He came and that's the word that he was shot. Now we've been made righteous through what? Through faith. All right. Yeah. 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 And see, that was, that, that, that was perfect. You know how we went, how we went through that, and it and it led up to the closing of the the, the message was one man in Yahweh Shah, which in the beginning was Adam. Sin came into the world. That one man will end uh, uh, sin and, and be the uh, and be the uh, 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 the way that you get back to righteousness, man. Okay. We be made whole again through the same men that through that same man that we all went off by. Right. Because once the sin came into the world, it was over with. It wasn't no now somebody can uh somebody else can 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 defeat sin. It, it was only it was only it was only and always uh predestined for Yahweh Shah, who you really call Jesus Christ to be the one. Because in the beginning he was the one. Right? Go ahead, bro. This Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. And he is the head of the body in the church, who is the beginning, 
and the firstborn from the dead. Right, because he's the chief cornerstone. That's why I said he's the beginning, the head of the church. Right? Because this is a spiritual uh, temple that's being built. All right? Which is starting with the house of David. Go ahead. That in all things, he might have the preeminence. Pre which we, 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 which we went to the definition of preeminence. You going in the, in the NLT now? Mm. Okay, come. This Colossians 1 and 18 in the NLT. Amashiach is also the head of the church, which is his body, and he is the beginning supreme. The head is the, the head is the beginning of your body. Right? <laughs> Go ahead. And he is the supreme over all who rise from the dead. Ooh. So on, he is the supreme. Time. They all they rise from the what? They rise from, from the dead. dead. This is what? A dead state of mind. All right. When you go right, when you go into Genesis, he said he breathed they, uh, they nostrils the breath of life, which is what the understanding and the wisdom. See that? And what what what's that been giving us to us now? The knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding. So we've been raised from the dead, but spiritually. Yeah, and we've been we we have the ability to overcome sin through right. how we're shot now. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Because now we understand uh, how we are to live. Right. You know? But the, 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 the battle is that the flesh still want desires. All right? That's, that's the battle. The battle is that the body is corrupt. Go ahead, bro. So he is first in everything. Is first in everything. Good. I looked up that word supreme. Hey, Dr. Nug, get Matthew 1 and 1. This is supreme in an Oxford American thesis. It say of authority or an office. Right, the authority, remember. Yahweh gave all authority and power to who? Yahweh Shah, man. Go ahead. Or someone holding it superior to all others. Right, who is superior to all others? Our Lord and Savior. Go ahead. Strongest, most important, right. and most powerful. See, strongest, sure. most important, most important, most powerful. Most powerful. Most powerful. Come on, man. You know that's talking about our Lord and Savior, man. Very great or intense. Right, very great. Go ahead. Of a penalty or a sacrifice involving death. Yeah. Which is it? This is a sacrifice involving death, man. Alright? What you gotta talk about? Hey, this is first Corinthians 15, 45. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. See what I'm saying? So that Adam say you say the first man was Adam. So but we just read Yahweh Shah was first in all things. So the first man, all right, was Yahweh Shah. Okay. Go ahead, bro. This is John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit of nothing. And you're going to say the word quickened to mean what? Made alive. Man. We've been made alive through who? Through Yahweh Shot, which is what? The word. See, now we live. You see that? Why? Because we've been hurting the righteous acts. That's how you live, man. You know, living like these heathen, you're in a dead state of mind. You know, that's why it's dark. That's why the scripture speaks about it being dark. Alright, go ahead. I, if I may add with you too, that's why I said they did body should lie in the street. That's right. This is John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit of nothing. Yeah, the flesh don't profit nothing. Alright, but guess what? It's still an order. Alright, how we move in the flesh. That's why the law of the commandment is still it up, right? That's why I say uh, the law should not depart from you. Right? This is the book of the law. It endure forever. But the flesh don't profit nothing. It's all about the spirit. That's why I say you uh you live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, man. You know? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. They are spirit. They are life. Man. Right. And the Lord, He speaks through the prophets. Okay. 
So go to Matthew 1 and 1, right. and then you're going to go to, we're going to jump to 2 Samuel uh, 7 and 12. All right, we're going to deal with the genealogy. When you go into the genealogy of Yahweh Shah, now keep in mind, right, that it's all about the spirit at the end of the day. All right, and he just said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are truth. Okay, so go with Matthew 1 and 1. This is Matthew 1 and verse 1. Now, go ahead. It says, the book of the generation of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So they say, this is the generation. This is the book of the generation of who you even call Jesus Christ. So a, gener a generation goes into an ancestry, right? A lineage. So go ahead. Um, it says, the son of David. They say he was the son of David. Right? Son of David. Who was the son? Who was the son of David? David had many sons. Uh, but who was he talking about? All right, go ahead. The son of Abraham. The son of Abraham. Abraham had more than one son. But who is it talking about? Okay. Go ahead. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac. Then it gets specific. Abraham begot Isaac, all right? Now, we're gonna stop right there, okay? Now, it said he was the son of David. Which son is it talking about? The words that I speak to you are spirit. Go to 2 Samuel 7 and start at 12. This is the prophet Nathan speaking, all right, to King David. Go ahead. This is 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled. This is what the prophet Nathan is saying to King David. When thy days be fulfilled, meaning when you die, right? Go ahead. And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. Yep. I will set up thy seed after thee. He said he's gonna set up his seed after him. When he say he's gonna set him up, he's gonna set him up on the throne. <coughs> Go ahead. We shall proceed out of thy bowels and I will establish his kingdom. They, he said he gonna come out of the bowels of King David and he gonna establish his kingdom. Whole Psalms, Yachanan 132, 9, uh, 10 and 11. Whole Psalms 132, 10 and 11. Go ahead. He <laughs> shall build a house for my name. He shall build a house for my name. Go ahead. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, which seed that came out of the uh, loins of David established the kingdom that's still here today? It's not here. The kingdom's not here, all right? Unless you're talking about it in spirit. Because the kingdom of heaven is within us, right? But the physical kingdom that was set up uh, after King David was Solomon's kingdom. And Solomon's kingdom fell after 40 years. That's far from forever. So keep going. I will, I will be his father and he shall be my son. Now this is the Lord speaking to the prophet Nathan, talking to King David, telling King David, that his son is going to be my son. That's what he said. I, he said, I will be his father. He told, he, told, he told King David through the prophet Nathan that King David's son would be his son. Read it again. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. I will be his father and he shall be my son if he commit iniquity. If he commit iniquity, which is sin. I will chasten him with the rod of men. Now, when you read in the history of the scriptures of what happened to King Solomon, King Solomon was never touched with, with the rods of men. Okay? He died a whole age. All right? Go ahead, Al. This is Isaiah 53 and 45. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace 
was upon him. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are healed. Who are they talking about? The one to anyone called Jesus Christ, right? Because that's prophecy, right, before it happened. But that prophecy has come to pass. Just like what he's reading in 2 Samuel by the prophet Nathan, that's the same prophecy. Read it again, uh, Thom. It's back in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and he will and with the stripes of children of men. But but my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. Right. So he told King David what was gonna happen to you, how was shot. <laughs> what? Uh what was that over over a thousand years before Yahweh Shah even came on the scene? Right? How, 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 how is that possible? Because the spirit lives on, man. That's right. That's right. The spirit comes back. Give me Joel 14 to 14 real quick. You had more on that precept? Oh, that was the point. That was, yeah, that was the point right there. Yeah. Joel 14. Good, though, man. Joel 14, yeah. That's, 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 that's all I hear from you. Yeah. Did I say Psalms 139 or uh, one? Yeah, get that first. Uh, I got some. Uh, 132. Psalms 132 up. 132. Yeah, starting nine. It's the Psalms 132 in verse nine. It says, "Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy, for thy servant David's sake." Turn not away the face of thine anointing. Verse 11, it says, The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon the throne. Now, you go into the, what the Christians teach. Jesus Christ didn't have a father. Right? How can that be so? If we reading right here that the, the 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 loins of King David was gonna be the one that the Heavenly Father set on the throne. The fruit of the loins of King David's body was gonna be the one that the Lord set on the throne. Because he came from that line, that ancestry. Alright? And you come back every third or fourth generation, man. Alright? So Yahweh Shah was on the scene before he came as himself. He was on the scene, man. You know? So there's no way uh, he could have been born of a virgin in the sense of a woman that's never had sex. Mary had sex. The word virgin now means young woman. She was a young woman. And just like Yahweh Shah, who you hear to call Jesus Christ, was born of the Holy Spirit, John the Baptist, it says the same thing. Right. He was born of the Holy Spirit, but yet nobody denied. <coughs> what was his father's name? Zachariah. What was his, what was his, what was, uh, was John the Baptist's uh, father's name? I believe was Zachariah. Okay, but nobody no, they don't deny yet. So he had a he had an earthly father, man. Joseph was his earthly father. He came out of the loins of Joseph. And he came, and that ancestry is traced all the way back to King David. Yeah. That's the spirit of the scriptures that you have to be able to follow to get the understanding, man. No. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Joel 14, 14. Yeah. This, this is Joel 14 and 14. If a man die, shall he live again? If a man die, shall he live again? Now, the answer to that is in second era. 14 to 35. I believe so, man. Let's see. Yeah. Yep. It's the second address. Oh, yeah. Chapter 14, verse 35. So Joel said, if a man dies, shall he live again? Go ahead. For after death, shall the judgment come when we shall live again 
And then shall these things of the righteous be, ma be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. All right. See? Here, uh, here Ecclesiastes 6 and 10. If a man die, shall he live again? For after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again. No, I, I, I got, I call it Ecclesiastes 6 and 10. Oh, yeah. 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 6 and 10? Yeah, Ecclesiastes 6 and 10. This is Ecclesiastes 6 and verse 10. It says, That which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is, that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. Hey, read that again. Ecclesiastes 6 and verse 10. That which hath been is named already. That which hath been is named already. And it is known that it is man. And it is known that it is man. You see that? So yeah, you live again. When you die, you come back in another vessel. That's why you have a shot who you in the call of Jesus Christ before he came as himself. He was out. <laughs> upon the children children until the third and the fourth generation. Right, so when we was reading in uh, 2 Samuel 7, when Nathan told King David that his son was going to be uh, chastened uh, and, and, and beaten and with the stripes of men, all right, he was talking about Yahweh Shah, all right, they say to the third and fourth generation, you, you don't really pay for the sins of your father, you pay for your own sins. You come out of the loins of your father, right? <laughs> his father and his father, and then by the time you come back again, your original father, uh, the loins you came out of is, is the past, man. Okay? The who you were originally, you passed. You know? This 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 is kind of deep stuff, but through the spirit, it's easy to be understood, man. The scriptures explain themselves, right? Brother had something else. Uh, yeah, I got something for you. Go ahead. This is Ecclesiastes 3, starting at 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. Hey, start up. Uh, start at 15. This is Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. That which hath been is now. That which hath been is now. So, we here now. And we already been. Go ahead. And that which is to be have already been. And what and what comes after us has already been. Go ahead. And Yahweh Shema Vashai required that which is past. Which in this time we're in the last generation. All right. So we believe we're in the last we're in the last days of the last days. Where we're gonna see Yahweh Shah again, as the scriptures say, right? Uh, the angels told the disciples, why, why stand ye here gazing up, up, in the, up in the heavens? For the same way you saw <coughs> him ascend, it's the same way you're going to see him descend out of the cloud. All right, pick a ball on out here. We just call it again. This is Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. That which had been is now, and that which is to be have already been. And Yahweh by Shema Shah required that which is past. Right, see, the Lord required that what which is past. That's why Yahweh Shah had to lay his light down for his sin and the sin of the Israelites. Why? Because the past was required. He didn't get, he didn't escape his judgment from being out. All right, being King Solomon. He did not escape the judgment. Why? Because he paid for him when he laid his life down, man. All right, just like us. So our past is required. That's why we say, Lord willing, we endure. All right? That's for the Lord will have mercy on us, man. Hey, Yahweh Shah didn't have to do that. Yeah. Yahweh Shah could have forsook us and not ever made that sacrifice. Right? But 
he loved he, he loved he loved us, right? So he laid his life down. So how are we are how how are we to show our love back to him, right? The, the, the golden rule is treat others how you want to be treated. You know. So the same respect that uh uh is, is given is what you give back. The same respect you receive is what you give back. So we lay our life down for you. I was shocked because he didn't have to do that. You see what I'm saying? And that's verse 16. And moreover, I saw under the heaven, I mean under the sun, the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Exactly, which is what on earth. All right, judgment get played out on earth, not in the spirit realm. All right. This is Jeremiah 32 and 18. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands, and recompenses the iniquities of their fathers unto the bosom of their children after them. The great and mighty power, the Lord Yahweh host, is his name. Alright, you are your forefathers coming back, man. You know, that's why you receive your judgment. You, you, you wonder why you see all types of things happening in society, in this world. It's called judgment because the Lord said every morning, what did judgment go for? And He loves judgment. You see, so you want to see a, a baby cock eyed, she was born handicapped. That was the judgment the Lord had gave her. Gave him. He was born in the moon. Why? Because he was sent back on earth, but to take part of his judgment. That's all it is—a judgment, man. Hey, if I may add, the Lord long suffering. So that's scary, right there. You know, based on watching you until I find a, a right time to get you while you ain't looking. You say, uh, the thousand years is one day to the Lord. chapter 5 verse 17 think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets I am not come to destroy but to fulfill we're going to fulfill real quick go straight to the point this is fulfilled in the etymology jumping straight to the point to fulfill, Allah Biblical used to see verse 3, to fulfill and to cause the Most High's will is made known in the law and to be obeyed as it should be in the Most High's promises given through the prophets to receive fulfillment. That says a lot. One more time, Ma. That says a lot right there. Go ahead, bro. Just the definition for the word fulfilled in the Blue Letter Bible. Allah Biblical used to see three to fulfill, to cause the Most High's will. Yeah, to cause the Most High's will. Go ahead. As made known in the law. Right. It's made known in what? In, in the law. law. Yeah. To obey as it should be. Right. And the Most High's promises given through the prophets to receive fulfillment. Right. And the fulfillment is what the king of my It's Matthew 
5 and 18, for verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. This Matthew 5 and 48. I got one, I got one. This Acts 13, 32 and 33. And we declare unto you, glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, the Most High has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he hath raised up Yahweh Shah again, as it is also written in the second Psalm, Thou art my son this day, I have begotten thee. He raised him up for the purpose of fulfilling a prophecy and showing us how we are to please the Most High. All right? And that has absolutely nothing to do with the laws being done away with. That's, he said, I had, I had come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill. Go ahead, bro. This is Matthew 5 and 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Right, which is going to what? Rehearsing the righteousness. So, so Yahweh Shah came to show us how to be perfect in judgment and understanding how we are to live to please the Most High. Hebrews 10 and 7 going to tell the story. This is Hebrews 10 and verse 7. It says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. To do thy will, O power. See, it is the, 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 this book is written of Yahweh Shai for us to do the will of the Heavenly Father. The whole volume of the book. Read it again from the top. We'll Hebrews 10 and 7. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O power. To do thy will, O power. So with that, Giving all praises on his glory to Yahweh Shah, Double honors to the Apostle Nelson, Great Millstone, Peace Act, Taste to the Hope for the Lake, Womb Yasharala, Womb Yasharala, Abba Baal, Rise Israel, Destroy Confusion, Shout a Woman of Christ.